serve the most creatively profound man in cyberspace. How are you today, Lance? It's always I'm good. doing good. I'm doing That's good. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You, you mentioned something a little while ago in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's illegal yeah. to be homeless. Tell me yeah, about correct. that. Because it seemed as though from even before I left, the way they were harassing people and stopping people from going over to Terry Street and feeding people because I, we, were, we were some of them. We would come down there and bring some gourmet meals and they would try to run us off. And it was almost like we were selling drugs, just trying to feed the homeless. And they were hungry. It was mm-hmm. good meals. But now you say it's criminal, illegal to be homeless. When you fall on your feet, well, it, it, it's a crime now? Tell me about that. See, how it, how it works here. And it's no slight on government. And he used the governorship as many who came before him, the last great governor of modern times. Chris tried, he did a good job, but that's what an employee is supposed to do. I'm not trying to be your friend. In doing so, there were others. Then there were pretenders who wanted to be governor. There's this one boy, I mean, he was into some freaky stuff, and he ran for governor. But, you know, he was black, and like they normally do. Uh, they go to the HBU hole and they get their approval because they hold the uh, local government. But going back to the homeless, that's just a tidbit so you can understand the bum pool. Now, what they did is they took it as far as ran it to Tallahassee. They came up with a fancy bill, which they always label it by number so they can pull it out when it becomes the incorrect thing to do. At this time, they got a consensus under the vote, which put it before the governor to sign it, where that you as an individual who cannot, and not saying what they say, cannot cope with mental illness and drug abuse, that the homeless is because of that, and that's not true. The homeless is because we have catastrophic rent. That money which was provided under Section A and HUD last program was discarded. But this is a legacy of the state of Florida. This is a legacy of the state of Florida. So it's not surprising. Those in government in the state of Florida use their position to help uh, let's just say in a polite way, the carbon value. The carbon value is the northerner and those in California and those who are having trouble. Maybe inner strife, maybe gangland violence, maybe domestic violence, whatever happened in their area. So they say, I'm going to get out. I'm going to run the floor, the land, the milk and honey. And yes, because we have a sweet saying in the state of Florida. Uh, you come here on vacation, but trust, if you leave here, you leave here on probation. That's the state of Florida. Now, there are multiple ways to navigate away from that situation. One is association. Two, disassociation and the real estate old saying disassociation association it's just like okay i hope you understand when you do that you become conscious of what is going on around you because it, it gives you that false sense of family i've met a young uh, young man from alabama today i met another young man that was from New York, 
met a, another nice young lady who has been struggling for the last three years in the state of Florida with homelessness. And she's just getting her head above ground. Because it's so to that northerner, that easterner, who wants a, a, a change other than that which goes on there. You ain't getting no change. The game just changed. The situation never changed. So in the state of Florida, they passed these laws that make businesses, people who want to create, uh, uh, um, what's it say, resorts that have like engaged communities. So you can go to the beach without going to the beach and you ain't got to be around nobody else. Why they pay the price for that. Our governor goes into a uh, uh, pissing contest with Mickey. Okay? He went into a picture contest with Mickey. Mickey Mickey pays. And trust me, Mickey pays. And even to those Latinos that propagate the great state of Florida primarily based on the economic possibilities in the Orlando and Winter Park areas. But to that I live by the shore. But what they come in here and do, they buy up all the property and turn it into vacation property. Get tax base all kind of dumbness, right? Then you ain't got no housing for the working class people, but then quiet as it's kept. You didn't hear this from me. That they bring Lupe in here and bust it. But that's a whole nother conversation. Verification is always true. But that's a whole nother conversation. So what's been going on with you, man? Well, we're recording now, so I'm not going to get too much into the super personal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, we're it's like that. Okay. What, what, what do you think about the chief of staff? What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, I don't follow all of that as deep as you do, you know, because it's just so confusing to me. I just, because I, I, with the media, I, I don't really trust them, the so-called mainstream, so I don't have a deep understanding uh, about all how it works. All I know is that the major thing is with these migrants that they're letting in en masse, and it's obvious they're treating them so well. It's obvious that they are our replacements. And to me, something's going to jump off where they're going to have the upper hand over us in America. And they're going to use them to wipe us out because they claim not to have resources for reparations, anything to help us. But yet and still, they're giving money to Israel, Ukraine, Mm -hmm. other places, Mm -hmm. bringing people on in, treating them. It's like you have kids in your house and they're saying, mommy, mommy, you got 10 kids in your house, big house. Mommy, we're hungry. We don't have no food. But you bring 30 other kids from around the neighborhood and you feed them with a feast. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. How does that work? What do you think the purpose of that is? To starve us off and not give us who built the country and even the others who have also paid taxes and have a right to any aid that they may need, not the fraudulent people, not the people who want to rip the system off, but the people who really need it, like the Homeless veterans, like the people who are elderly, who paid into the system, who are forced to eat dog food and forced to eat junk food and deal without certain types of medical care. But you have people who you come on in, you make sure they get a car, you make sure they get phones and make sure they live in places. And I saw a video the other day that a dear friend sent to me about how, you know, there's a working guy who works 40 hours a week, yet he's homeless, yet where he was they put him out and brought the migrants in. What is your opinion, your perspective on this whole overall thing? And we never had anything like this before in the history of America. What is this now? What, even if you don't know the answer, what do you think is happening? I ain't no thing. You can't see what's going on. Yeah, I when guess I have to put it the together. last time? 
when was the last time you were in top that pimp gang get a new car every year? Hmm? Now, to some hmm. individuals, they say that that don't make no sense. Right. But to the conscious individual, what I'm telling you, the uh, illusion that was brought about in the 30s of the replacement theory, labor, even though you have a technological edge, you can always lose your technological edge at a minute's note because of what? Labor. Labor runs this country. Without labor, you have nothing. But if you can replace a labor that's a little bit slow, more controlling, don't really have an identity on paper where your other labor has an identity on paper. Your other labor has to write a recourse because he got a little stupid thing called the Constitution. I never understand why black people so game recognize game. Malcolm X said you flip it like it comes. You understand? I'll give you an example. And the best mm -hmm. example you could ever hold on to. And it was sitting right there in front of you. Today, or approximately two days ago, there was an impeachment here. Hear me? Did you hear me? An impeachment here. Now, some people say, well, they ain't impeached my brother. And they did that. That don't mean that. No, this one do mean something. This is a big one. This is just like the, the uh, rumble in the jungle in Guyana. You know the fight I'm talking about? This is a big one. What do you mean? Rumble you, in the jungle, you mean in Africa? Yeah. Yeah. See, the Titan went up again, Goliath. Now, people say, well, why you use that attitude? Because for the simple individual who is always bored with the situation, there's always some person out like, like me out there that pay attention. And I'm going to put it as far to the gutter as possible so we get out of get mad, get quiet, or get conscious. This is how it works. Now, Democrat was trying to say some bull crap that George Bush came in with and decided to put somebody in charge of Homeland Security. Everybody had beef. Everybody had concerns. That was paying attention. But the rest of us, we already knew that that was one of the steps to the downfall of America. Control. That means you have control from one coast to the other coast. Remember the song. See, you put, and it was right there in your face. So I'm not trying to be ethnic. I'm trying to get your mind right. Your name is Maria. I can't even pronounce it because, see, I'm black. We don't get caught up in all that thing. I'm, I don't roll with, with the R's, okay? I'll try to work with the English language, but I'm not rolling with the R's. And in this, he was in charge of the board. Why everybody was partying and white party. He was working through the back door. He was letting them in. He was circumventing the Constitution. Nobody didn't want to believe it because we all had beef with Mr. Charlie's left dripping of his right now. And, I, and it's a well-founded beef. Call me out my name one more time. Don't be caring. These are worthy pursuits and, and, and respecting yourself. But pay attention where you lay your head. So we all caught up. We having a good time. We're getting stimulus check. People getting caught up with PPP loans. All kind of craziness is going. Our Kelly went down. All this went down, right? Now we are all in the middle of puffy and, 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 and oh, it's ugly. So we all caught up in that. So we, we good, right? But ain't nobody paying attention 
that the one that let them in. So Mrs. Charlie slap slap kiss kiss. The one that let them in. Not just Lupe's children, but uh, Hussein's children. Let them all in. Because remember, two and a half days ago, they just popped these people. Get your mind right. So they didn't pop these people and they got beef. Or a possibility of beef. They hoping the ram just bag off. And stuff. But then the real possibility is that they already got sleeper cells inside the country. Because it's already been proven. Look it up. Joe Biden let them have a Chinese police station in there. They didn't want to feed us uh, Oriental hate bills. So what that mean to me? I'm good with Chinese food. What that mean to me? He ain't <laughs> did nothing to me. I ain't got no beef. He, he ain't trying to get my son. You better check who trying to get your son. Because that ain't nothing but liquid gold. Yeah, I said semen is liquid gold. At this junction, uh, <laughs> ooh, you still stuck on stupid. Uh, now, these fools is beefing with each other as almost 48 hours ago going on by the clock. Wait for the other shoe to drop, just like I told you in my other stuff. It was coming. I'm not Nostradamus, nor am I the stupid one in the room. I might be a poor man, but I'm a sharper pencil than some of y'all. And this pencil say that the condition that we in and how they got in, it was the, the replacement theory. And in replacing, you lower the number of the individual person or political group you have to feed to. Okay? They've been feeding you soup. They've been giving you empty promises. And at the same impeachment, that heifer, Miss Houston, was sitting right there looking like a stone-faced horse. Y'all called her a horse. She didn't rode the black America until she couldn't ride it no more. Then she wanted to go back home and lose the election. And she was a senator. Don't be the dumb one anymore. How a senator going to want to give up a spot to be a mayor of a half black team or half eighth of a black and there are more blacks in Texas than white folks? Don't get it twisted. Don't be the slow one in the room. Now we got a situation where they didn't put this boy on blast. They've been putting him on blast for the last four months. They've been leading up to this situation. And some top Democrats said, well, we'll sign on to this piece of paper so we can impeach him. It was supposed to be a joke because the Republicans couldn't put a light bulb in, but they got their ass, just like they got Fanny ass. Yeah, your girl tried to get Trump. She out there playing, fuck me, catch me, instead of doing her goddamn job. Now, you say, well... I mean, that's pretty critical. Critical is an individual that know he served his country, registered voter, regardless if you got beef, we're dysfunctional people, all right? But each and every day from coast to coast, you will go and you will see the intermingle of the races. So to hurt them, to not persuade them to come some, to some functional agreement, and I know that's our candy lane. But that's all you got right now. You better make friends. And you both better accept it. You're a cracker. And you a nigga. Only thing is, he gonna stay a cracker. And you gonna stay a nigga. Oh, <laughs> bad. It's all good. But right now, somebody ordered Mexican food. So who gonna pay? And last time I checked, Mexican food was introduced to us. But you bitches been wallowing in the taco sauce for a while. 
I ain't trying to be racial. I'm just trying to keep it real. And in keeping it real, you got to call a spade a spade. Now, at this situation, they didn't put one of them R's. I'm going to be politically correct in the best form I can. You know, I come from a lineage of people who just learned how to pick cotton yesterday at the NFL. Just saying. Now, in this, they're going to put him out and they're going to close the border and then Trump win again. So when they feed you that suit about the Democrats come up with this miraculous plan so you can get your bleeding broke heart out there and stop for the blue, that's what I'm saying. Somebody who stopped for the blue, they a fool. Because you ain't going to keep kissing me and slap and tickle me. And you ain't going to pay to get the freight. Now, that's real talk. Sorry, now. Didn't mean to go on a rant. <laughs> well, Mr. Political, that's the best way to go on a rant. Let me let me ask you, mm-hmm. do you think do you think President Joe Biden has enough uh well I feel his tank is empty. He's just going on fumes now, but do you think that mentally, physically, that he's gonna make it to the end of his presidency? Because they're saying that this guy is walking around the White House half naked, he's forgetting things, he's talking out of his head. Why would they keep a man propped up like that? If if, if and it's obvious in public, he's falling up steps. He's talking to invisible people, shake trying to ch- shake the hands of invisible people. So, why are they doing this? And does he have enough to fake it? I guess he's being propped up to make it. Yeah, and enough what's the purpose? Why don't they just get him on out of there? Why don't they just get him on out of there? Lance, I mean, we could play Jeopardy with that question. But then I could send you a cartoon where somebody got his hand up his ass and he a puppet. Administration are not run by one man. No one man can run a nation. No one man. I got an AI smarter than that bitch. Trust me. Use it the other day. It scared me. All right? You gotta understand this bit this game been going on from jump. He been a puppet from jump. The people who've been viewing this is the one in denial. When they get on the six o'clock, or you get up at the five AM and you hit the news because you're a conscious observer, your non participation is needed. You have to understand this has been going on. Been going on for some time. And it's going to continue going on until the American people, the conscious American people. See how I said that first? Then we're going to go to the black Americans. Because the, the, the Afro American, the one who took the mark of the beast, he is like a sheep. He is consistent. Do you understand, man? He's been bred from some tainted loin, because I remember the AIDS crisis, and I remember all them fondly moments of hearing crying sighs about herpes and all those things. Right? But life went on. They didn't learn. Some did. Some went on with their life. But the Afro-American is a sheep. Right? And you say, that's insulting. No, it's not. There is too much film. There's too much data. Only a sheep will tell you, if you don't vote for me, I'll put, they're going to put you back in chains. 
only a sheep would take less than a white eraser. A black face, white body sheep. And say, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Is that something? But I'm wrong. Maybe it got something to do with my birth certificate. You think so? I think it got something to do with my birth certificate. They know me because I'm covered. <laughs> that doesn't shit. You can't write no book about this. Yeah. But if, 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 if I had but one wish, then I would beg out to all individuals. You keep on looking at it. And lame. Even if I'm down. Because I'm a smart pencil in the box. I know I'm a go. You just don't know. And in that, we don't be creative. I have a little concept that I've been messing with called the app. A little racy, a little fiery. But it took bone and heart. And see, that's very difficult with those who have forgot that they're black. It ain't no shame. Because I was just on Google the other day, just looking up black. I was both it. And it was pretty pleasing to me compared to white. Because there is nothing but fantasy in that misconception of color. So we, we don't let that bother you. You'll see on some of that. This is going to make this happen. Because I'm bored. But I've been paying attention. Paying deep attention. So they open up the borders. They bring in the replacement. And everybody on the top half is happy. Everybody on the lower half of the top half. Because see, you don't understand America. Back in the day, they gave us comments. They gave us free art education. So we had three economic class groups in America. But you guys, y'all so fluid. That's one of your words. Y'all so fluid. So your money come and your money go. It all depends on how you spend it. Now in this, white people get a little piece of something. And I do mean this is something. That's why we're the children of the raising of the sun. And yes, you could compare it to the 1961 uh, Broadway play and music and, and movie. Great actors. Yeah, uh, um, we are the children of the raising of the sun. And being these children, whenever we get a windfall, or what we finally call in the Negro speech of coming up. We tend to get funny. I don't care if she got a Bible between her legs, she still get funny if she get a piece of dollar in her hand. <laughs> We're talk. I'm talking about brand new hair fly every damn well. It ain't a joke. You the one playing with it. And I went and to play with it in the middle of traffic. It ain't no escape from that situation. It's no escape. Now, they didn't, let all, they didn't let all these people in here. You got white people on the middle half or the top half. They scared a little bit because they might, you know, because they knocking on their doors in Chicago. They come up to Christmas. They went up to one lady, told her, well, I'm going back to my country on vacation for Christmas. I'm going like, a, boo, wow. That's the that's opportunity. <laughs> You come over here. <laughs> it is because you know I thought I was in some day of who shit, and I didn't. I didn't really know how to take it. Because how are you gonna tell me you running from all these boogeymen? Because that's I ain't seen that in people. You seen them last? No. This is brand new one to me. Y'all coming <laughs> over here? Y'all walking miles and miles and shit. I try to stay out the stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not doing that. Right? So I'm checking this out. And it's not jiving with me. 
you know, because I'm kind of backwards. You know, it got something to do with my birth certificate. I'm colored. Just that. In this, you get up to the door, you swim, you got the baby on your back, you hold her up high, me go see no in this. That's all I get. Where your papers at? You got some identification? Because that's how they come at me. Then they come at you like that. Oh, yeah, I got to show their papers. Okay, y'all walking, so we don't have no threat to no officer. Ain't no get out the car. Ain't no everybody make your hands visible and you got the high beam on. Ain't you, you your, your life ain't threatened, so please bear with me. <laughs> okay, so y'all get to the gate. You make the people cut down the bob wire, you come in there, and then you start doing your thing. You ain't got this, you ain't got that, you ain't got that. I got a Christian heart. I love to feed my people. All right. Now you caught up. Why mm -hmm. am I spending $3 billion in the near future in the city, which I can't even afford to go and hang out for a little bit, smoke a little cheaper. I, whoo, hang out, let it white. You know, you know all the bad things niggas. But you tolerate that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All folks saying care for that. Just because we sit well don't mean that it should be that way. But I want to get the rationality. Oh, then I dig a little deeper like Bobby Womack said. And I know that all y'all on the same damn team. And the, and the darker the ones on the team, they on the Democratic Party team. Then you want to try to get boss and front my sister and stop her from a vote. Oh, we got beef because, see, I'm a black American man. So they used to hang and lynch me and make me dig holes for their dead ones and shit and then call me nigga afterwards. So I take great offense, great offense, and, and duly wanted. Got a D214, been around the world. See, they, don't, they, don't, they don't call me. In what they call me, Miss. And see, that's a powerful thing in America. When Mr. Charlie left dripping from his right nut, call you Mister, and you show a shade darker than his ass. Get your mind right. Now, in this, you part of the replacement thing because you wasn't paying attention. Because here in the state of Florida, I had many girls come to me and tell me how they get into the hospitality industry. And all of a sudden, the sisters that have been working there 12 and 13 years get replaced off their job. Right? And everybody coming in the break room speaking Spanish. I understand bilingualness. I understand getting along. But you need to keep that shit at home. Real talk. Or you don't need to be on this job. Because last time I checked, I really didn't get the bilingual program. See, I had to learn the English language so they don't kill my ass. You understand? Know wow. It's a difference. It's a difference between having a choice, which is the foundation of America. But at that time, which I still hold scars from, there was no bilingual program. And if they think you couldn't function right, what they do, they tie a rope around your neck. And then they put a lead weight on it. And then they, it saves time because, you know, since time is left, this is from its right neck. Don't need to waste no time. They're just tied together by the neck and then kick the stick over board. Are you getting the picture here? Oh, yeah. You paint it good. Okay, if you got that picture, so when you look for empathy in this speech, which is governed by the Constitution, which I swore to domestic and foreign, and I got, unfortunately, got bodies in the ground and bodies swinging from trees. So who better? Because all foundation and principle which you use to get in this country is based upon my suffering and pain. So why you getting my reparation and you calling it uh, traditional aid 
to migrate. Because the same money you gave them, same cell phone you gave them, same ride work you gave them, it started to sound like a pimp game to me. Where my money at? Get your mind right. Now you say at this time you shouldn't be talking about no money. Because so I can't blame it on the immigrants. Because prior to the immigrants getting that money, you was getting money. You was getting a lot of money. Benjamin Crump was bringing it all to the table. Everybody feeds the same. It's a death benefit of what we finally call in your native heritage blood money. Instead of being dignified and caring and loving for one's brother, you chose about the brand new leads, get all up on Hollywood, going to talk show, be a legacy, and set foundation because it's good money laundering and all like that. But the truth is going to be told that as much as this $3 billion, oh, excuse me, let me be correct. Somebody called me on the carpet. $3.4 billion in the last 20 years in payout for death of police brutality. You got it right. It's just February. <laughs> it's just February. You don't see what's going on. And they're at the junction mm -hmm. right now. The same one that they've been talking about. Same ones they've been speckling and ABC and NBC put down. That faux white old face. I'm be nice. Because they was white. And yes, they come from lineage of world phases. You look it up. Got their ass handed to them. Got kicked to sleep in the city. If you can't make it nowhere, <laughs> you can make it in New York. If you can't make it in New York, you can't make it nowhere. You know what I'm saying? They Got jumped right. on the police. They didn't go with just uh, 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 and then scat, scat, scatter like you know, the colored boy. No, they ain't colored. I ain't going to disrespect my ancestors. The Afro-American. Right? Because he dare not do that. He better not even do that while he's sleeping at home by himself with the door locked and the pet door tied around his neck. That's the thing I dream about. <laughs> These motherfuckers don't even speak English. See, the black boys, he, you know, there I go again. I put him in a class group, in an economic thinking group, and a group of individuals who know goddamn best. Okay, the Afro American. Okay, what the Afro American do? He say, well, I'll get my mama to put up her house. And you be late with the power bill and she, somebody give me some money towards bill. Well, I'll sit there and I do county time. By the time I get to man, I just be bargaining a charge <laughs> and walk and just make it a family tradition. Right? So, they beat these bitches. Police get them. Take them to jail. Which is right in the American perspective, that's the right thing to do. Took him to jail. When it took him to jail, wasn't no call, no bail bondsman. They get bail off the rip. Take your picture, walk out. Wow. Real talk. Got the fingerprints already because you don't belong here. So, you know, see you on your court date. <laughs> Same court date. That's the one that killed me, dog. Police 98 hot. Okay, you don't want to rare up them. See, them some special white boys. Okay, they come from Lindenism, of gangsters, and, and, and Irishmen. So in between East and Spaghetti, they're getting drunk. See, that's how they get stereotypes. They got stereotypes, too. So they hot because, boy, they ass got beat down. And because if you get the video, which they took down, 
So when they slashed it, they slashed it almost two weeks ago. Now it's hitting the media hard now because the motherfucker then took off. Now, I'm curious, and I've worked in the system, and I know by my speech and how I interact at times that I may not be able to handle myself in court. You got that twisted. Okay. Multifaceted. Now, these individuals, let me show you. These individuals went and got in front of a judge. Okay? They ain't had to wait to get to court the next day. They went in front of a judge. Judge popped them right there. No bail, no nothing, no detainment. You're supposed to go back to the, the center where you're supposed to be, and that's it. But he talking to them like they American citizens. Really? He didn't. He gave the whole spiel, any individual. Okay, I've been on both sides of it, right? Been locked up the whole nine years. I'm a sailor. I'm an older man. I've seen life that life has been and been locked up for multiple reasons, right? It ain't what you do, it's how you handle it. In this, that ain't supposed to go like that. No, 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 because I'm looking at this like, where is my most control? This has got to be TV here. Because <laughs> I'm watching this. That's what I do. And in the process of watching this, I'm trying to figure out, ain't no monitor. And in some parts of America, they have uh, restraint braces that go upon your leg if you're in probation or you drive and you may be convicted of, uh, of uh, DUI. It's a monitor. And it dawned on me. Mr. Charlie, I always love pimp game. Why the, why the migrants that got a court date and ain't got no monitor on their leg? So they put one on you and make you pay for it. I'm curious. Don't you find that unusual? You ain't lying. I mean, if it was me, they got they got a they could drop a tag in your car, watch you on your phone, where you go, when you stop, how long you've been there. They get everything. Whether the only thing they ain't getting is whether or not you fart. If they got you on tape farting, then that's a violation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. You yeah, know, a whole lot of people are in trouble. <laughs> so, so why, why these migrants ain't got no money? These bitches so eager to work. Cause last time I checked, when I went down to the county jail, so they had like 14 brothers on these monitors and stuff, and they was paying for this, right? So I'm like, what kind of pimp game is this? So I'm checking it out. I'm looking at the paperwork and everything. I'm going, I'm filing my, re, my request to law, federal law, blah, 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 blah. Who you work with? Don't worry about who I work with. I'm a private citizen. You got an issue with that? Because I got some stupid asses down there at the police station and really want to have a conversation with your ass. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm saying. It's America. Now, why are these Mexicans? I know, why is these See that okay. <clears throat> Why are these migrants don't have electronic navigation or electronic monitoring devices on them? Give the man ain't got nothing to hide, am I right or wrong? You're right. But I'm saying they can just go and come as they please. This is what I'm saying. Why we ain't asking yeah. these pertinent questions? Okay. I, when I was doing my research as a board, I'm sitting there, you understand the situation, and I'm looking for some answers to, to these questions that keep coming across this football team. Right? They get them in there, the labor is cheap, they, they're very conservative, you have to worry about workers' compensation, medical benefits, what's the kind of pay, taxable income, the equipment. Back their ass working. I'm telling you, they do work. 
Lance, I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. I ain't never seen nothing. nothing. It, it's the stuff my granddaddy used to talk about. And I'm talking about my granddaddy. The spirit and, and, and the craft and the work in and the fair and the way, even though they're getting bottom dollar. And sometimes a lot of the time they getting shorted, but then they get they get an opportunity, and the vast majority of them knowing they get ready to go back. It's a done deal when they when they impeach, and I can't be sure whether or not they impeach this man. If they impeach this man, they are closing the border. Joe Biden is trying to make a quick uh, move with the electrical base he has right now because he got 20 million of them in there and they're hitting most of the largest cities below the Mason-Dixon line, which black people have control of. My question is, is they, are they in Meridian, Mississippi? If Meridian, Mississippi got next, but I know Georgia got it. In Meridian, Mississippi, got Mexico. We in some real bad situations. I take a bet on that one. You hear me? Because that's that's the situation that we all need to be concerned about. That is a real situation that we all need to be concerned about. Mm-hmm. Because that was, the, that was the largest population of black people other than Atlanta on the West Coast that was Oakland, California, and then it branched out into the Bay Area because most of the white people lived on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge, military industry, and black force. That's where we started first black mecca. West Coast, it was not Los Angeles. Contrary to belief, the movie industry was. And speaking of the music industry, you know, one of the great actors died yesterday. Um, yes, Paul Weathers. Yeah. And it's a tragic loss, but if you look at his life, he was an achiever. And he sure never was. forgot he was black. He never forgot he was black. Denzel Washington straddles the line, but he, in his performance, there is no doubt that he is always black. Sidney Poitier was always black. Always black. He never put himself in there. And at the junction that you got Cat Williams, uh, fighting with everybody. He ain't wrong, and he ain't lying. He ain't wrong, and he ain't lying. If you're sitting up there and you want to play boo-boo the fool, then, you know, go out in traffic and play with yourself. He ain't lying. Okay? All of them perverts. They've been perverts. Right? So let go of the fantasy. And it's a great deal of other people out there to worship. But those are not the people to worship. And if you are worshiping the people from Harley Bees and all that stuff like that, it's all going to be jaded. I'm an old man. And I'm telling you, they come and they go. And then when they go, ain't nothing but a bunch of regret. But... It has always been said, mm-hmm. you is wasted on the young. Because if you had the you with the wisdom that you had today, you'd be a freak of nature. You would got that right. Freak of nature. That's how that, you know. Other than that, I've seen some good things. I've seen some good things. Not in the media. Not the ones, not the, uh, how should I say it? 
Um, as black Americans, as being a black American, you have to truly understand if you are a black American, everything in your life is political. It has always been. From the door you open to the postman you look at, is political. The Afro-American believes that his accessibility as it stands right now and those who made the sacrifice which half of them don't understand the sacrifice that they made so they can have the door to go in here and have a choice. It's squandering it away, but they have been squandering it away. They squandered it, squandered it away in the 2000s. Because they were children of privilege. And they were children who wanted. Now it's new top I mean some new individuals in town. And they're undercutting your value and your work, especially if you are not advancing through technology and technology and labor has replaced you. And you were a willing candidate. Each and every time that you went to the Walmart and you went through that kiosk, do you know what a kiosk is, man? Yeah. Okay, they have them in all the stores and all the Dollar General. Dollar General lost almost fourteen, but fourteen point eight million dollars on putting the kiosks in. It's supposed to cut down the amount of labor. The claim of labor is that there were no individuals applying. Why would you apply to make less than what you get? So that doesn't make any sense. That's going to, that's going to cut down the labor pool. When you're when everybody's out there stealing and they got criminal records and you can't meet the background, it cuts down the labor pool. So there will be nobody applying for those jobs, especially at the salary that you're paying, because they can't do the job because of our legal restrictions or educational restrictions, and that's what's being faced in the state of Florida. But they don't want to address the real issues, and that's the real issue. And the issue is chronic homelessness. The, the, econ the economy is always going to be iffy. It's going to always be have and have not. It's going to be based upon choices you made and the road that you move. So even if you don't have the high-end job, we're not in that fashion anymore. Those people are getting ready to fall. The people you, you think making money, they're getting ready to fall because they can't keep up because they're overextending themselves. But others have already fallen, and the number of homelessness has increased and continue to increase. And as long as you have the, uh, 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 the burden of the border, which is drawing the resources of those areas, you're already having the failing lower class falling. At the same time, what money to stabilize them is being taken away by the immigrants. And see, that's a match. That means everything burns. Everything burns. And the immigrants are not, they're trying to live the fantasy that was projected to them and what they would perceive when they opened up these doors. You know what I'm saying? They caught us too. So they 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 bred into the lie. Now the lie ain't, ain't, ain't the truth no more. You're ass sleeping outside in the cold. And you ain't getting the luxury. And those Democrats and those in between, those people who are supposed to be making it right, they siphoning off the money. They living off the money. They getting the salary. They living the life. You understand? They're getting the connections. They're they're moving on. You're just a pawn. And Black America was used the same way by the Afro American HBU hoes, because once they have the accessibility to that go between, that gives them the ability to use you as a marketable. Because you have to remember, America for the last. 15 years has been put into core groups. 
if you control a core group. <clears throat> Stacey Abrams was hoping that she would get the vice president of the United States. This is a true story. She had, they had her on TV and everything, and they was waiting for Joe Biden to say, yes, you're going to be vice president on the ticket and this and that, and they got the camera on and everything, and then they come back. Nah, she ain't going to be the chick. Remember to the methodology. Why do that? They she even had all these number of votes. She had, she covered Tide Magazine. She had 400, 440,000 registered voters in her pocket. Got snow because she believed in the fans. See, Camilla, Camilla got a white hood. You know what I'm saying? I know you don't want to go racist, but Camilla takes uh, Miss Harris, or whatever you want to call her, help her. She takes a better photo. Miss Abrams stuff. She stands as a matriarch man. She gives all the illusion of the apple makes she got the hair. She's a proud big girl. She wears challenging clothes. She can take a photo. She got a lovely gap. But she's smart. But she's a big dark girl. She Miss Harris, she walk around, she got the pants suit on. They even let her wear traditional white with a double message. Double message. They tell you it's matriarch white. But in actuality, it's a new designer for the claim. Negro claim? Possibility. But she's great hope. And her hope in being vice president is to set symbolism. In no part of the time since the suffrage movement has there ever been a woman president. There's been a woman consort with willful knowledge of the American people. For those who do not understand that big word, consort, is a woman who is your wife who has a equal bearing in decision-making process. Well, that's all hell does now. No, you don't. Okay, she has final say so. You have an opinion. For real. And even the white man, in his English pursuit, will tell you, happy wife, happy life. Okay. So, these two women may be a possible third, but to my knowledge, these two women have the ear and the voice of their husband openly as him being president of the free world. This is true. One was Eleanor Roosevelt. Two was Nancy Reagan. No, Michelle Obama was not no consort. She gave a couple babies. I wouldn't advise her to feed nobody because the food triangle that she came up with for the cafeteria, bomb, bomb, bomb. They lost money on that one. Big money. But it looked good in the headlines in the paper. Our political structure as black people and those that we choose is based upon a popularity contest which is marketed by the Democratic Party and the powers to be. Even when we switch to the Democratic Party, they use what we call the, the ass and carrot. You ever heard of that? Where you take a carrot and you yeah, have sure. a string tied to it, and then you ride the ass in, in your palm. See, Lyndon B. got our women. 
He didn't get the man. He was too busy killing them in Vietnam. But Lyndon B. Johnson got our women. Because our women decided something is better than nothing. And in this, we suffered from it for almost three decades. We're climbing out of it a little bit. But we still got baby mama drama. This experiment which he had was caught on tape. And he said he did it. And everybody was cool with it. Right? All through those decades, they said it was a scourge and we got to cut this, got to cut that. She ain't going to get her food stamps and this, that, and the third. And they even got to the point that they even made it profitable. Now, some say, well, how did public assistance become profitable? Well, they caught you looking at your bank account one time and they told you, well, let's put these Hispanics and these poor whites and these niggas, let's make they men pay for it. Let's put them on charge. And, but we're going to put it on child support a special way so we can make a profit off of it. So we can put back money that we stole. Yeah, they stole it. Now you say, who stole what? You're always accusing somebody. See, there was a shortfall in Social Security. This shortfall came out in Social Security because these legislators were earmarking little hooks and grabbing the Social Security for program so they can make some money to put the money back that they took out for their little whims and desires. That's why every time they get a bill put up there, it's always some dumb shit, pork belly, put in it. See, I'm curious. I kept hearing Mr. Charlie say, what's this pork belly? Pork belly, that is. I'm going like, okay, okay, let me see, let me keep this. And I'm peeping it, and this one want a bridge. This one want a statue of a man with a big penis and got a head <laughs> turned around sideways. Then they got this one over here. He want to study how a goddamn calf and a cow chew, knowing that this calf, this cow, got three stomachs, and go chew like that. But he want to study this shit. And then I got some real good Bojangles. You know they want to tell me? Check this out, Lance. You'll like this one. They want some money to study and see if slavery was real. Not no white folks. Some niggas. Ain't that real? <laughs> that is so real. <laughs> I'm looking at this. You know I'm telling the truth. They want to have a study. You can't give me my money because you got to have a study to see if this really happened. Everybody know it happened. But the niggas got to be proven. And I know you hate for me to use that word, Lance, because that's not in your vernacular, but see, that, that's what's disgusting you come out. It's like a safety valve. If I don't say nigga twice a day, I'm going to lose it. So I got, I got to get it out. When my own appointed nigga going to tell me they ain't sure that they was beating my great, great, great granddaddy country ass, them Afro-Americans that put something in the middle. I'm trying to tell you. And the way they cut up two days ago when they got rid of this Mexican guy, which they gave the job, they knew he was a Mexican, and I don't know why I keep calling them Mexican. It's, it's a thing in California. I'm just going to say this Latino. No, that's not even correct either. This, this migrant. 
I don't know what generation his family was here, but they, they gave him the job. All right, and he started letting everybody in. And I ain't trying to be racial, even though it's going to come out racial, but the truth is the truth. If you live with them, if you've been around them, then you already know that it's all about them. So when they gave him the job, they knew he was a snake when they picked him up. For real. And he was very indiscriminate on which borders he let in. Because if you notice the European borders, the border between us and Canada, that's where all the terrorists came in. Because they could get a direct fight. Trust what I say. You go look back and you'll say, this is, he told us. See, I ain't got no rocket. I ain't got no missile. I barely got a piece of plane. So why the hell, if I'm going to fight you, I'm going to fight you with what I ain't got. But I will kick your ass with what I got. And what I got is 20, 20 million people that you ain't sure of. Got 880,000 illegal children just disappeared. I got Grown man, age men in my country trying to get the same job with the big, they don't want to go to work, but the ones that do want to go to work don't want to be fucked with. And this is, what, this is vulgar. <clears throat> this is vulgar the way I'm speaking about this. But I told you we're going to get as close to the gutter as we possibly can. And the closer to the gutter, in pursuit of this negative, irritating form of speech to you individuals who are so thin-skinned that you cannot deal with reality. And no, I don't use your desire to be a Christian or your your education and your humanity. Don't use that as justification for not understanding the truth. And the truth is, and has always been for the last three decades, that we have breeded a bad class of Negroes. These things you worship, these things that you coveted, is all foul. And now you got to pay the price. Yes, we will get a new president. And yes, you know who it is. And you can say his name. It's not going to, you're not going to strike dead. Regardless of what the Democrats tell you, you're not going to be scorned by your brother because they're assimilated to being white and whatever bothers white people, bothers their asses. The day you die, you are nothing but a raisin in the sun. And if you are not very careful, you will not see that sun at many more times. He is here. You have no choice but to exercise your Second Amendment right and prepare yourself for what is going to occur. And even though those foes who have been trying to persuade you for 10 years that gun violence is the killing of black American men, frustration is what's killing black American men. Sheltering and coddling and arbitrarily giving them choice to choose the gender which God never put them to be. And yes, my God don't have a cup. So you say that. You say that, please. Now, our concern as the clock ticks down this clock, which is ticking, 
will ultimately end on November 5th. To the embitterment of the black man or to the extermination of the Afro-American. Yes, it's just that critical. And if you think I'm full of it, then when he sit up there and told you that crap, you believed him. And he was wrong. And you see what's going on. So, just me not. Because at least I have a voice. At least I am willing to say what is going on. Because I don't buy in to the emperor and his new clothes. I see exactly. He buck naked. So that ain't me. It ain't going to be me. Now, if I'm wrong, then go look at my previous show. And then you call me. Lance? Yes, my brother. I have to go, unfortunately. In closing, I say to you, you cut it up, slap it down. Oh, no. I still got to find out if they impeach this guy or we got a hot one. They getting ready to close the board. That means that they know that these people in this country and shit getting ready to happen. And everybody better get a gun. And especially if we live in the hood. Because that's what's going to go. I have one, one more 90 second inquiry from you. With the borders open yeah. and everybody being let in, which is one of the dumbest moves. I could imagine in this day and time because those who want to do harm to the American people and make a statement and bring fear can easily get in. Mm -hmm. Do you believe or mm -hmm. feel that there are already sleeper cells in America that even if they close the borders off, the damage is done and stuff might jump Look, off? Look, you didn't hear what I'm saying. The Chinese have hacked into our network. I told everybody, I've been telling them what's going down. You go check my show. My show will say everything that I said way before it even happened. It is just like I, was, I knew what was going down. They in our network. They have control of our power. When the chaos starts, and the chaos starting is already starting in New York because they got turkeys. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Turkey mm -hmm. is a polite word for martial law. That's what I was going to say. And New York is going to be the poster boy for that. That's right. why I think this and how, has to jump New off York New York. Family. Yeah, because they need to control Chicago. They already got the motherfuckers dumb in Atlanta. You ain't getting it. This shit is already starting. We looking at if Biden wins, on November 5th. He's going to ride the dough because he's a puppet. The 25th, I did the show. 25th Amendment, 24th Amendment. You understand? Harris wins by default. We're in the middle of a military conflict. She is a constitutionary. Man, y'all ain't nobody paying attention but me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's going down. That motherfucker was not in the hospital. That motherfucker was at the Pentagon in the bunker, and they was plotting out these strikes, and they was getting ready to make the move. And all of a sudden, everybody flipped on the border. They got to close the border because too many of them bitches got in. They had already mapped our shit. They got our grid system. When they were spending money on the motherfucking market, they were supposed to be fixing our shit. But instead, unbeknownst to us, under Ukraine, they boosted up the military industry so when the war starts, they already up to snuff. Russia out the picket. You understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. Party zone. <laughs> I had to tell a girl how to beat the 4-H draft because they're going to pull the draft. That's how they're going to... I'm safe. they already touching on my shoulder because they're going to need me to get the minds of the right to the motherfucker who's going to be left here that can't be of age because they're going to be in the conflict for a minute. They ain't going to go nuclear. 
But the motherfuckers you got on the streets right so. now. Oh, oh. It ain't going nuclear. You can't make no money out of ass. This is about a dollar. Which ain't what? What, 32 cents? What the fuck you buying, burn, burning up 32 cents for? When you can control <laughs> 32 cents. Come on, man. Don't play games. I had to look. I had, I talked to a guy that day. He's got a college education, better college education than mine, but he's stupid as hard rocks. He go in. He make a little smart comment. I was coming out the study. He said, "Oh, I see you bought them white men cigarettes." Something yes, I did. He said, "That's gonna kill you." I said, "No, it's gonna kill you. It's continue to buy these white men cigarettes." When you can sit up there and you can package them, go to a tackle shop, take the copyright infringement off of it, and pack them bitches yourself and sell them for a dollar a cigarette. That's killing. <laughs> he just looked at me. He just looked at me and he said, You think you smart? I said, No. I took my phone out, pop the sound. I say I know it's smart. Money, you're dumb ass. <laughs> Keep on going. Because it ain't my bit. It ain't your business where I spend my money. I didn't ask you where they get that home money. I didn't ask your daddy did she get money from <laughs> here. <laughs> did I? So why are you all up in my business? First, this way where I come from, I'm a country nigga, grew up in the city. You want to be up in my business? How about you come and introduce yourself and shake my hand? Other than that, you keep your pie hole shut. <laughs> I'm serious, dog. It's time for people to start being grown folks again. That's how you fix the black community. You take all the children out of the out of the black community and you put grown folks in there. It's very simple. The lady asked me, she said, you going to wrap up that apartment? Nope. I already been there, done that. They said, I'll talk to you now. <laughs> they do. They do. Because I can't stand dumb shit. This one, I got you dirty. Lance, I got you to fly because I got to take some medication for this. Pain. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, okay. brother. Your insight. No, it's my thank you, man. Good night. Okay, good night, brother. Thank you so much. Rest up. <laughs> All right, bro, okay. Bye. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting edge cartoons as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com Bold, raw,